Do you ever wonder why, no matter how hard you try, no matter how many courses you take, no matter how many books you read, no matter how many steps you follow, you can't make your life happen the way you think you want it to happen? Well, what is it that you really, really want? And who? Who are you anyway? What did you come here to do? I am Reverend Allie Bierman, and you're joining us right now for the Let's Get Metaphysical show, where we go back and discover the hidden forces, the reasons why your world looks the way it does and why it doesn't look the way you think you want it to. So let's continue. The way to create doesn't happen in your conscious mind. You have a left brain, you have a right brain, you have a conscious mind, and you have a subconscious mind. The conscious mind I call the boss. In fact, in my book, What You Don't Know, you don't know how your brain and mind keep you stuck. There's a whole chapter devoted to the difference between what your mind tells you it wants, or what you tell your mind it wants, but can't possibly create. And why your subconscious mind, acting as the clerk, the file clerk, can create. How is that happening? Well, if you ever heard of Dr. Jill Boat Taylor, she was a brain scientist studying it. And suddenly, while she was working, she recognized the functioning that she was losing. She was having a stroke. She was a pretty young woman, but as a scientist, she knew a stroke was happening. It's a stroke. It's a bleed in the brain. So she took notes for as long as she could, so she'd be able to look back and study it later. She was able to get help, but meantime, it impacted Pay attention here. It impacted the left brain. Now, that's where your physical body lives, not your spiritual body. That lives in your right brain. So as she lost her ability to function as a scientist and everything she knew, how to walk, how to talk, how to live a normal life, she became very aware of her spiritual side of her brain. And at one point, I think I'm quoting her accurately, she said something to the effect of, she discovered that heaven lies within, that it truly lies within, because for the first time, she was spending her awareness in her right brain, in her spiritual side. Now, here's the thing. Your left brain, your conscious mind might tell you the what, but it is not possible. It does not have the ability to manifest it. That's why it sends a message down to the subconscious mind, which is linked to the spiritual part of you, because the only way anything in your life can manifest is through your spiritual essence, through your spiritual energy. See, when you go to school and you take all these courses and every place you go, you get educated and um, floating quotation marks because you're not learning anything about life. You're memorizing a lot of stuff and people no matter what age, who are not good at memorizing in the system that they use in the schools are considered slow or not very bright. It's very interesting because very highly educated people with all kinds of degrees, with all kinds of double PhDs, boy, they have a lot of information. But you know what all that information is? It's trivia. That's not what is allowing them to create, to manifest, to change their own lives and to change the world. I remember I went to Duke University 
And at the time, I was a real Francophile. My whole library was books in French. It was 20th century plays, and it was novels, and everything was in French. So I studied with somebody who was supposed to be like the be-all, end-all person with whom to study French, 20th century French theater. Now, some people have really big egos. And when he gave a lecture, and he then gave you a test, he expected you to quote verbatim in his words the response to each question. And even if you paraphrase, and me, I didn't want to spit back like a parrot the words he used. So I expressed the exact same ideas. And he always gave me a C instead of an A. And it was easy to see that the people who chose or who knew that he was like that and wrote word for word what he had said in lectures, they cut A's. And I tried a couple of times just expressing my own thinking because I don't like somebody telling me how to think and how to express myself, especially if I'm giving back the exact same information that they just relayed to me. So that was a very vivid awakening to the world, the academic world. Now, whenever I trusted myself, whenever I didn't focus on how to do things, whenever I moved away from my senses, your ability to see, hear, taste, touch, and smell, those senses move you out of your spiritual being. They keep you down in your physical body. They block you from being able to manifest because the manifestation, if you know about chakras, that happens up at a higher level. So when you understand who you really want to be and how you really want to live your life, and that actually takes quite a lot of awareness, of conscious awareness, of starting up in your upper chakra, which the chakras actually go up. There are 20 of them. I'd have to look at my chart to tell you how many are above what's not normally taught in chakra study. You go above and below, deep into the earth, way above your physical body. So when you are knowing how to visualize deep down in your heart and what I've been sharing with you the whole time in this podcast is the invisible forces driving your life and those invisible forces are you. There are you. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And anytime you're looking for the physical to manifest, you get stuck, you get delayed. So what I'm recommending to you is start with who are you really? What do you really, really want? Now, I thought I really had a handle on this because I've been studying for so darn many years. I thought I was studying it for so many years. But when I looked at what I really want, I didn't have the fine detail. Like, I know I wanted a house in the country. I know what my dream house and dream yard and the dream lake and everything looked like. However, I never made the specific request, vision. Yeah, I can see my house. I can see the yard. I can see the neighborhood. I had no idea where it was. Well, how can I create it? How can I bring it to my reality? When I hadn't figured out what country I wanted to live in, 
what state I wanted to live in, who I wanted to live in, to have that clear a picture. My guess is that's why people have vision boards where a lot of things happen. That's why. I know I had a vision board. And one of the things that happened for me on the vision board was going on a hot air balloon ride, winning a free cruise, being gifted a djembe instrument, and a chance to play West African hand drum music, actually in a band. It was a band of West African hand drums. Those were the things on my vision board that happened. And I don't even remember what else was on my vision board that didn't happen because none of those were things I was visualizing. None of the other things were coming from my spiritual energy, the facts of who I am. Going to take a quick break here. Sometimes, you know, I like to share the jewelry I make. This is all semi-precious stones. And I can't go through them all because it's a whole bunch of different ones. So and I'm not sure what kind of energy I want or need so that my body's working the way I want it to, creating what I really want in my life. So I'll take a bunch of stones, some covered, and they're naturally infused energetically with certain frequencies. Each stone has its own frequency. And if you want to know more about my naturally energy infused jewelry, just let me know. In the show notes, you'll see how to contact me and I'll talk with you and I'll find out what it is that you want to create in your life and what energies can support you in getting there. And on that topic, notice every week my hair is getting darker and darker. That is also happening naturally because of using natural technologies that allow my body to heal itself no matter what's going on. So when I tell you struggle is optional, I'm coming firsthand. I'm coming firsthand. I got back the ability to use my face, to speak, to move my tongue, to have my body do things the neurosurgeon said could never happen. And it all happens naturally. So ask me about that. If you're struggling or know somebody who's struggling, who's hurting physically, emotionally, financially, wouldn't you like your world to flow more easily? Remember to take advantage of the gift from Audible. You get to choose the audiobook of your choice. You get to explore the site for 30 whole days, all for free. And when you're in the level that I'm in, because I've been in it for so very many years, I must have more than 50 books that are just available to me free. And they're not like junky books. They're top-notch stuff. So follow my link in there. Get your free trial. On the topic of books, I've just been doing this for mm, a couple of decades. I read a book, not just read through it and then move on to the next book. See, when you do that, your body, mind, spirit can't take it in. You're not going to change your life because your eyes went through all those words. And you finished it. And then you're on to the next one. Reading a book is studying a book. I listen to it every day or parts of it or read parts of it every day for years. And I was using just two books that I was studying for very, very many years. And that was Rhonda Burns, The Greatest Secret 
not the secret, the greatest secret. And D. Wallace's book, Born. Now, recently, the universe led me back to Bob Proctor's books. And I studied lots and lots and lots with Bob Proctor. And I'm sure that's why my experience and my spiritual knowings and the way I live are really, if you look at him and you look at me, that's where I got it from. So I added two of his books, and he has a gazillion of them. And I listen to the two of them pretty much every day. So in my MP3 player, I have a handful of books. I had a whole bunch of books that everybody reads and recommends. And I realized none of them did me any good. I couldn't make any life changes. It was a waste of money, a waste of time, and a great waste of my physical energy. However, the four books I have now, two of them, Bob Proctor, and the Rhonda Byrne book, and D. Wallace's book, I continue to go through them every day. What happens when you go through a book more than once? You're going to see something that you hadn't seen before. And I'm pretty sure it was Bob Proctor who said, it's not that the lesson, that the teachings, that the words weren't there before. It's that you are a different person. You're in a different place, in different knowings of who you are. Each time you read, listen, go through this same volume, and therein lies the value of having the books that you intuitively know, not coming from your right brain, there's no logic involved, coming from your left brain, from your spiritual center that creates your reality. Those are the books that I go over and reinforce, and I definitely hear and notice things I didn't hear before, even though it's been many, many years I've been going through some of those same books on a pretty much daily basis. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I am Reverend Allie Bierman. This is the Let's Get Meta Physical Show. And if you look in the show notes, I have something really special for you because you're here today. And if some of this is a little strange to you, go back to listen to the last episode before this, which also talks about the energies and your spiritual energy because you are a spiritual being having a human experience and not the other way around. And what I'm doing for the first five, now that's only five people, all the people, and I never know if it's going to be 40 people or it's going to be 600 people who are following this particular episode. If you leave, uh, engage with me in YouTube or in one of the podcast apps, and let me know what you liked or what changed for you because of this episode or because of the last few episodes. And if you're one of the first five people doing that, I'm going to gift you the book I mentioned at the beginning, What You Don't Know, You Don't Know, How Your Brain and Mind Keep You Stuck. I'm not just gifting you. And it's a short read but it's one of those very powerful reads that have impacted more than a thousand lives. I'm going to give to you both the digital copy and the audio copy, but only if you're one of the first five people who engage with me. Remember to enjoy. That's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing in your life happens outside of you. 
to hear, taste, touch, smell. That's not happening outside of you. So stop trying to make that your reality. See how what's appealing to you in each of those areas fits into your spiritual energy and manifesting what you want because now you're beginning to get a clue of who you actually are. And you do that by looking at what you really, really want in life. I very much look forward to hearing from you, to interacting with you, and to being here with you next time.